Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Try. My name is Retromation and this is Maho Kenshi, a deck building turn-based tactics RPG that I'm very excited to be checking out here today. The game is out now on Steam. We're going to pop on in to check it out. It is tagged for roguelike, but I don't know if there actually is the roguelike elements or not, to be clear. Realm. Rumors of rebels and uprisings are common, but more recent rumors speak of dark forces and villages being destroyed. You have been sent to investigate. Well, all right. Mission details in the most remote islands of the Celestial Realm. Rumors of rebels and uprisings are common, but more recent rumors speak of darker forces and disappearing villagers. You've been sent to investigate. Right-click Atad's preview your travel path. Right-click again to start traveling. Okay. <laughs> just a gentle saunter every action consumes energy check how much you have left at the bottom left corner of the screen great so okay moving through a force costs additional energy it seems ending your re your turn refills your energy click the end turn yep standard stuff there there's an event a few tiles ahead of you. Events are unique stories where you can make choices that impact your rewards. Stop on a tile containing a scroll to start an event. An auspicious encounter. A giant mon uh, gigantic monolith towers over a clearing. At its foot, a lonely figure smiles and beckons you closer. You recognize the distinctive clothing of the Flowkeeper monks. The Order is tasked with guarding the ancestral gateways between the islands. For most people, these portals are the only way to safely travel from island to island. It's unusual to encounter one alone, separate from the rest of his order. Finally, you have come! The islanders were told of your imminent arrival and see it as an omen of good fortune in these troubled times. Alas, the wor if the worrying rumors that have started to spread are true, then I fear terrible events are in store. Tread carefully, Maho Kenshi, for the Celestial Islands are no longer the haven of peace they once were. Thank you for the warning, strange man. I'll be on my guard. Gain cards. Just as the tales say, you're a, you are powerful and wise, but please beware. In addition to recent dangers, the terrain in these parts can be quite treacherous. Gain two safe travel cards. Uh, dash a tile. Drag and drop a card on the desired tile or character to play them. Do we not have, like, a uh, left-click is drag? I'm so used to it being on middle-click nowadays. Which I do prefer, but hey. Tiles have different energy costs and grant different defense and strength bonuses. Hover over tile for more details. Two attack up, four defense up. Dig it. What is a fast... I mean, uh, fast forward, I guess, for just, like, moving in between here. So we can theoretically move some tiles on our own. Cross water and empty tiles. Doesn't seem like it's any penalty there. And so these cost one energy to move. So theoretically we could do that to dash into the forest instead of having to spend the extra two. I mean, hey, it's kind of kind of interesting. So we'll scoot on over here. Wow. Uh, so, like, we'll want to dash into the forest and mountains and stuff. As you're about to cross the bridge, you sense a hostile presence in front of you. A lone man stands in your way, blocking the bridge. At first, you try to reason with him politely, but he responds only with taunts, jeers, and threats. You realize he has no intention of letting you pass. When you try to force your way past, he draws his weapon, intent on fighting. A perfect warm-up for you. Charge him. Gain strength and cards. You swiftly charge... I, I do think... I do know that there are... There is combat in the game. Okay, so yeah, I mean, we're gaining gaining cards now. You swiftly charge, taking him by surprise. The impact pushes the man back, which leaves him wide open. You gain four strike, four strength for this turn. Strength is a damage modifier that boosts damage dealt by one per charge. Gotcha. So the man is in the mountain, giving him a, a decent amount of benefit. So theoretically, don't we want to, like... Well, we cannot. I guess we can just straight up kill him. Is there a way we can interact with him and, like, fight without a strike card? Does that appear to be the case? What? 
Wounded, the man collapsed to his knees, breathing hard and begging in a teary voice for you to spare his life. He promises information in exchange. Before you can decide, he reveals that he and many other outlaws were hired by a mysterious man wearing a white mask, with the sole purpose of spreading chaos throughout the island, all in exchange for gold and treasure. We never really asked any questions because he paid so well, but be warned, Maho Kenshi. I've seen him accompanied by twisted and nightmarish creatures. The man seems honest, but it's hard to believe such a tale could be true in such a peaceful realm as the Celestial Islands. Perhaps you can confirm whether he's telling the truth by inquiring in the nearest village. Yep. Q and E. Yep. Scroll mouse wheel in and out. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. Space to reset. That one's good intel. So three to move on to a mountain. So we may or may not draw those extra little things there. So are you an enemy? You are surveilling range one. So am I wrong for wanting to just like stand here? Like what's your, you have 15 health. Let's see what it's like. Let's make you approach me. No, or not. Move closer. Defense reduces incoming damage. Ah, but we don't have extra stuff there. That's right. We don't have the extra boost, so we're only going to be doing a little bit. I mean, is there anything stopping me from just, like, walking back? Attack of opportunity? No such thing? You must... Oh, I was going to say, you must approach. You can see the current status effects applied on a character below their health bar or in their character sheet. Click on a character to open their character sheet. Yep. Oh, look at that. Four drawn cards, zero base strength, all of that. Fair enough. And we can see what kind of thing they do. Four damage, inflict a weakness, reduces damage dealt by one per charge. Uh, I mean, this shouldn't be enough to mean we can't kill you. Killing enemies earns you gold. You can use gold to buy many things in the Celestial Islands. Scoot, scoot. But yeah, if this is more of like a constructed campaign kind of a scenario, I think that, you know, honestly, that sounds very exciting to me at this point. Boop. Recover a portion of your health and cleanse all uh, negative status effects. I, I guess so. I do want these cards, but I feel like it is, there's got to be some kind of reason why we would want to go quick. Because otherwise, why would we not just stand still all the time? Because <laughs> it's boring, I guess. Draw a card per adjacent enemy. 10 damage. If it's from the planes, reduce their defense. Okay, now that's really interesting. That that invites an axis of interaction that is unlike more deck builders, which I think is really, really nice. I think that that's a cool idea. Uh, implementing the terrain heavier. Four damage twice. You know, it could be good. Let's just get this, because I really... I, I like that concept. That strategic concept. We don't have the ability to move anymore. I feel like there's maybe going to be, like, a time where... Uh, blight of some kind starts to spread, and we need to move. At a certain pace. Oh, man. See, because the thing is, it's like, yeah. Nothing stopping that from being that big of a deal. Safe travels up to the mountain. Word village chieftain. As you draw near a village, a man standing by the gates comes up to greet you. Greetings, Maho Kenshi. May the Kami bless your arrival, for we are in desperate need of your help. You quickly lean, learn that the man is the village chief, and he explains he has received no news from the northernmost village of the island for several days. He has been unable to investigate the matter further due to the recent increase in bandit activity. We can't send scouts for fear that the bandits will attack them. And I cannot send the village guards without having more information, as that would leave the village defenseless. Please, Maho Kenshi, you must investigate and find out what happened there. Rest assured, I will find out what's happening there, strange man. It's reassuring to know that this matter is in competent hands. I fear that you, you will find the roads leading north are no longer as safe as they once were. But alas, there are too few of us here to keep up with the threat. One last thing, Maho Kenshi. Please accept this in exchange for your help. The man takes the sword hanging from his hip and presents it to you. The blade gleams in the sun, showing its quality. It's dangerous to go alone. This might be of use. Your objective has been updated. 
Locate and search the abandoned village. Gain base strength, gold energy. Gain energy? Uh, I don't know. If it's gained max energy, that's a big deal. The Elder's face looks solemn as he places the blade in your outstretched hand. This blade has been wielded by each successive village elder for generations. Its enchantments imbue the wielder with great strength, as long as they fight for the protection of others. May it serve you well in your current task. The sword's hilt is warm to the touch in contrast to the coolness of the blade. Plus one base strength. Ah, yes. Looks messed up. Okay, so we get a little bit of a, a permanent boost. Buy new cards at the marketplace. Ooh. This is a landmark. You can interact with them. And there are many throughout the Celestial Islands. There's a, This one's a village. You can buy new cards there. Deck will be reset at the start of every mission. So adapt it to fit your current objective. Gotcha. So it's like... Yeah, so it's not like a roguelike. Because it's not run-based. But your deck... I do like that you get to rebuild your deck at the start of every mission every objective that is something that i feel like gets lost in the translation of uh making a more longer form deck builder is like when you kind of get that point where you're like ah yeah i made my decision i made my fun choices now i kind of just ride it out uh many travelers and merchants come through this humble village you might find interesting goods in the marketplace i shall do it i guess i need to go here first how much money do i have 180 lose five health draw two card Oh, I love sacrificing my life for, for damage. Lose 5 health, gain 2 fly. Move freely over, but not stop on other characters. And water tiles, all travel costs are reduced to 1. I mean, that is cool. Gain 3 strength. When discarded, gain 3 strength. This just seems good, though. Like, seems really good. Whenever you draw this, gain an energy. When enraged, what? Uh, if you've lost at least 10 health since your previous turn. Oh, wait a minute. Let's sacrifice my life. Let's do a life sacrifice to gain damage build. I feel like there's not going to be a huge reason to sacrifice life just kind of, you know, walking around. Oh, there's a dude. Hold on. Dash a tile, gain three strength. Eight defense, draw a card. Let's go aggro. Um, Hill, I get plus three damage up here. Like I could, I could dash and be in a more optimal defensive position, or I could just like go ham. We should do... Wait. Yeah, we do a lot here. So this costs zero. It doesn't seem like there's a benefit for casting it. Oh, run away. Come back here, you coward. Whoa. I feel a little bad about that, but only a little. No reason to sacrifice health just to move a little bit more. Maybe Well, we wouldn't even be able to move a bit more. 10 damage from the planes reduce their defense first. Is there a way to hide? There's always a... Uh, okay, thank you. Always a must-have feature. I-M-H-O. Um, one fly and 12 defense. That seems good. This just makes so much aggro happen, though. Um. I guess I'm better off waiting. Alright, let's get stupid. Sacrifice life. We're gonna need some way to like get reliable healing. What is this? Destroy cards from your deck. Ooh. I mean, I'm assuming again we need to be on it, actually. Uh, 
I mean, the dash is really nice. But now that we have we have a combat dash, I think we can remove one. Oh, it costs money to do. But that I mean, the good news is that means we can do more of it as well. I could ditch an attack as well, since we have just like a better attack. We'll just we'll thin a bit. Discard your hand, gain 10 defense per discarded card. When drawn, gain an energy. When enraged, 9 damage, strength, and uh, affects this card three times. Tempting. I'll take it. Is this just one tile for movement? It is. You have, so you have a surveilling range of one. So as long as we're like outside of the range, it doesn't matter too much. Hello there, friend. All right. You can upgrade cards in dojos. Upgrade cards are stronger, allow you to improve your deck without lowering your chance of draw. Hey, I like that they explain why you would want to, like, upgrade cards instead of just adding more. Because, like, this could be a type of game that someone who's not familiar with roguelike deck builders and has played a million, you know, hours of Slay the Spire. Th this is something that, what, uh, I, like, I think someone like that would be more likely to want to try as it not being run-based and, you know, permadeath, etc., etc. Discard your hand, draw a card for discarded. I mean, you know... It's basically, do I want this? It sounds like it's getting kind of expensive. Let's do it. So currently it's doing 12, which is, you know. Is this technically a planes? It is. I mean, they have no defense to be reduced. Get out of my swamp. Do I have enough money to really upgrade things? We shall see. Uh. <laughs> um. You want to tell me what's so good about upgrading this card? Oh, the cost goes down. That actually is a really big deal. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm looking down here. I'm like, what the heck? The cost change in like a lot of times in other games when uh when an upgrade reduces the cost, like the color of you know, like the number changes or something like that. Just usually a thing like that happens. Gotta be honest, Steel Gust. I, I'm really liking the idea of that. And it went away, so it looks like every card just has a, a maximum of one upgrade. Which, considering it looks like this, whatever mission, is about to be done already. I feel like it's not that big of a deal for it to be a little bit on that shorter side. 90 bucks I, everything costs the same right it was all it's all a hundred you have a much bigger awareness range ready to sacrifice his own life to attack see here's the thing I don't know what to do maybe I could like in the event that I moved here and move back. Oh, you have... A, okay, well, you have ranged attacks. Ephemeral. Play it to destroy it. When drawn, lose two health. I sure as hell could. <laughs> Should I go stupid? I mean... If this does six, what, what's the best thing it could draw? I mean, that would do 11. 11, six, 11. Like, we don't, we do 23 damage at, at most. So there's really no point to. I'll take some damage, because it's like, 
we're in a scenario where it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Hey, stop it. Oh, now you've asked for it. Whoop. Into 27. Yoink. Bye-bye, nerd. Then we gotta wait. I don't know, there's something interesting about it being turn-based outside of um, combat. You know, like, seems a bit redundant, but I, again, I'm leaving that open for uh, there being a potential otherworldly kind of survival element, or God forbid, like a hunger meter or something like that. Because, uh, you know, it could, could be certainly something that could happen still. Ghost Town. Ah, you search for the abandoned village that bears no fruit, but you are, as you are leaving, you glimpse a small childlike silhouette disappearing into the woods. Trusting your instincts, you silently follow. You soon discover a nightmarish scene, human bodies scattered all over the forest floor, and three small creatures, the likes of which you've never seen, busy feasting on the corpses. A little further, you spot a few villagers in a makeshift cage, leaving no doubt that you have found the missing villagers. Oh yeah? <laughs> if you act quickly, you might be able to ambush their captors and save the remaining villagers from a terrible fate that awaits them. Study your surroundings or gain strength. Gain rush, rush in. After witnessing the horror, you decide to take no chances with the lives of the remaining villagers. You charge the three creatures, hoping to take them by surprise. I mean, to be fair, I was hoping I would draw that other card. Let's go! Whop. <laughs> Works for me. I am going to take a little bit of a beating, but it, it sort of seems like... Okay, am I... Does this count as a planes? It does count as a planes. That works then. We can kill here. Otherwise, we'd be off lethal by one. And then you... Hill does only gains damage, does not gain defense. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Very happy, huh? Let me guess. Oh, wait. What's this? Is this... Are these new options that can now show up? They've been added to your collection. When drawn, recover four health. Recover eight health. Active. Uh, deal eight damage. Increase by seven per fly. Okay. That's fun. I did not... I did not anticipate there would be fly into damage. I was gonna say... Like, for, like, maybe three minutes, I was like, are these cards going to be, like, that basic? Like, just do four damage. Do four damage, but twice. Block ten damage. They This has got me way more excited already. Seven damage twice when flying, recover eight health. Like, these are actually interesting uh, cards now. Send your Maho Kenshi on missions in the missions tab. Strengthen your Maho Kenshi in the ways of the Maho Ken tab. Check on missions, check your collections, and learn more. Yeah, so it is, it's very much going to be a more of a campaign-based, uh, mission-based thing. So, I'm gonna assume you can use Crystals of the Maho Ken to purchase upgrades that improve all your Maho Kenshi landmarks or items you find on missions. Yeah, I mean, like, understandable. If it's gonna be... I don't mind permanent upgrades in a campaign. In fact, I like them a lot in a campaign-style game. It's it's just all about the placement of where they should be, you know. Upgrade. Safe travel cards also grant two additional defense. Start missions with 50 additional gold. Like, I find it interesting in this, in this capacity. Yeah. Challenge tab. You can review the different challenges for all the missions you've unlocked so far. Every challenge rewards you with crystals of the Mahoken. Okay, so we've already done that. And there's three three different missions on three different objectives on the mission. Those are all the missions. Okay, I mean that's cool. Tutorial mission, story mission, the pit of darkness. Am I? Yeah. Okay, that is that is that. Kaito is unavailable. So so to Saki. Okay. All right. So it looks like just going here will give us. Uh, How have these vile oh. creatures reached the celestial islands? Pits tainted by corruption serve them as gateway. They must be sealed if the celestial realm is to be saved. 
and only you have the power to do so. Darn right. So it looks like we maybe have to find them. Or something like that. How have these vile creatures re- Oh wait, you already told me. They must be sealed if the celestial realm is to be saved, and only you have the power to do so. Close the corrupted pit. The pit is still open. There we go. See, there we go. There is... I knew it was coming. There is the reason to move quicker. And the reason to keep dash cards and stuff like that in your deck is kind of like more of a long-form benefit. All right. First draft. Four damage twice. I'm assuming this does get... You know, Are we... We don't have any base strength anymore at all. Let's go for a multi-strike build. We do have one basic upgraded strike. There's for revenge. You come across a ransacked merchant caravan, likely the victim of a goblin attack. A few survivors are milling around their carts, desperate for help. An old woman is crying in front of two bodies, covered by a dirty sheet. She calls out when she notices you. Monsters! They attacked us without warning and showed us no mercy. Please, Maho, can she help us? Uh, gain energy or gain gold. So when you say gain energy, is it literally just... Let's click, like, let's find out. Uh, after you say you'll avenge the merchants, anger replaces their grief. They killed eight of us in an attack. Eradicate the same number of them as payback, and we'll be able to find peace, knowing our dead have been avenged. Do this for us, and we'll happily give you any of our wares that were not destroyed or stolen during the attack. Just before you leave, the merchants give you some useful advice to navigate the area. You get two energy for the turn. Side quest started. Slay eight goblins. Get cards and gold. Okay. So, we, yeah, we gain energy, which, truth be told, I regret. Because, <laughs> well, I guess I can move into a forest. Because since a forest costs two movement, it's slightly suboptimal. Uh, mountain. Oh, you have, okay, you have a massive range. I guess I need to move closer then, if, you can, if you're going to be able to attack me anyways. So, if time is of the essence, one way you could do it is to play Reckless, you know? Like, in the same way that defense cards would be good, if time is of the essence after a certain amount of turns, uh, you lose. Going for big hits becomes relevant in a different strategic way. You know what I'm saying? Like, if combat turns last less time... That's very beneficial. And, like, we kind of want to rush them head on a little bit more so we don't get screwed over later. You hear a terrible inhuman roar in the distance as you realize you arrived too late to prevent the cult from in initiating their plans. Even from here, you can tell that the beast they've summoned is not to be trifled with. You must hurry and seal the corrupted pit to stop the cult from unleashing, unleashing further chaos. Ooh. Ooh, ah. Perfect. So, the missions are close the pit, which I'm assuming is this. Yeah. Lose if the pit's still open after that many turn. Defeat eight goblins. Oh my. Oh, you are fast. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll pace it down for a sec now. Trooper Oni. Yeah, you are just... He's just a tank, you know, is basically the thing. We may reveal enemies by being over here. What was that about? Uh, okay... I don't know what kind of, min like, attacks they have. Do I get some kind of defense in here? No? Because they look like melee units, and I don't know. I've never seen any enemy move. Okay, you clearly move two spaces. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 actually very, very interesting.
if I move up to this spot, you are the only one who could get to me in one. So, like, let's just do that and we'll see how this goes. Can we split them apart? We can split them apart, but they can indeed move and attack properly uh, one tile. I don't know if they could move two. Plenty. Again, for science, let's activate them and back the hell up. You can move two tiles and then attack. Okay. I need to figure out... It's because they have three energy. Is that what it is? And their attack cost is zero. So that's something we would we figure out by playing more, which is, is a neat thing that... It's sometimes frustrating in a roguelike when it's more, you know, it's got the permadeath element. But in this, I don't know. It's kind of exciting. Just going to take some acceptable damage. You can check enemies' behavior. Enemies can adopt various behaviors. For example, surveilling enemies will detect you when you come close to them and will track you in a certain range. So clearly, like, they can't possibly have infinite movement, though, right? Like, they can't. I refuse to believe that. Dash a tile when enraged since your previous turn. Okay. Let's just be reckless. Defense and drawing a card is good, though. Does this cost money? Doesn't seem like it. And this is a shrine to remove some stuff. I think we can take a little bit of time. Twenty max and current, importantly. Let's destroy one strike, one dash. Maybe we could just destroy two strikes. But now we have okay, how many dashes do we have? We have two. Draw a card there. Just thinking about my average car my average uh, hand draw there. Castle. Acquire new talismans. That is whatever that means is of interest to me. Grant you powerful unique bonuses. I assuming they're artifacts. Obtain them in castles, level up your Maho Kenshi to unlock additional talismans. Why does this only take one movement? It's like a freaking moat. Oh, because there's paths in there. Two energy every four turns. What? Found a dead zone. It's like a huge dead zone, too. What the heck? Let's go, aggro. I feel like you're going to be able to see me, like, really soon. Yeah. About you, your radius is eh. Dash and gain three strength. I feel like or two weakness could be good if he's gonna be really ah. Sure. It's interesting that whenever you get that card, you draw it immediately. Buy new cards in the marketplace. Like I do want to wreck you. Three energy. Are you for real? Is that, wait, is that your radius? Certainly not. That is a massive radius. That is wild.
So you could theoretically, you could theoretically escape it. It's just uh, absurd. So vulnerable, increased damage taken by one per charge. Obviously, like, I should run. But what if I didn't instead? I mean, if this is the big guy of the whole level and we can get him down right now, just by accepting one, one gnarly hit, then whatever. Defeated the Oni. I mean, that was one of the big achievements. We just got a... I, like, I literally got a Steam achievement for it. Um, is there anything that says... Ah, whatever. The range they have. The max range they have for movement. Also, if there's a... If there's, like, a hotkey to view all of the the highlights because that's one thing that i'm having a little bit of uh push back against is some of the tiles it's slightly hard to tell when they're within the radius or not like if there was like a qu very quick top down view there was a, a little bit less stylish and but a little bit more like informationally uh rich because <laughs> like having to hover through all of these to figure out which spot would theoretically get me besmacked considering the fact that enemies can um, chase you down across the whole whole map is um, it's important it's a, it's a really important piece of information to gather so I'd like this potion but I'm trying to figure out how to get to it without ruining my life right you're in a mountain you have eight. I, mean, I can still kill you. I'm doing it. I guess the answer is like setting up a better def uh, defense situation. I forgot we were going to get the two energy. So we have four armor. Didn't really matter. That's the other thing is just getting a lot of armor would certainly solve some of the issue. Ooh. I'll lose health. Okay. Zoop. I'm coming to get you. Please don't do more than four. You thinking? Reduce your defense by six and then do six damage. Ah, okay. Okay, you little devil. We have four energy and we can't use all of it anyways. We might as well. That's just money though, isn't it? See, so yeah, this is the thing. If time is of the essence, that sure does help. What is this here? Three base defense. Ooh. 15 turns we need to get moving. I'm assuming we'll draw a dash. Oh. Well. <laughs> yeah, there was no reason to do it that way. So, yeah, keeping... I don't know. I, I see the value in flight for sure right now. And you know what? Let's do a little bit of a dash in. Go for a multi-strike on you. Thirst for revenge. You get a piercing thrust card, purging vial, and a fresh horse card. I mean, those are probably all good, but I wish I could choose, you know, if I want those. 13 damage from the planes. Reduce defense first. Ephemeral dash four tiles. Ooh. 
Cleanse all negative status effects and heal health. It's ephemeral. Oh, it's destroyed on plate. It's not necessarily on, um... Yeah. Alright. That being said, should I just do it? I could go get the defense. Let's upgrade first. Can we upgrade this to not be ephemeral? No. <laughs> uh. hmm. Why not? We're rich. That's how much money we just earned by doing all that. So we can dash back here now. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do it. Deal 11 damage. You must discard two cards to play this one. Oh, must. Oh shoot, I thought I was out of energy. When flying, draw two cards. I mean, this is still just, this just does more damage. And this is no longer viable. I don't know that I'm going to really have a lot of hands where that other thing works. We need to close this portal. I can assume it's something I can just do by, like, literally standing on it. I guess I would assume. Hello there, guy. Let's seal the pit. Oh, that's it. Done. Get wrecked. This is really cool. This is very, very cool. I like this a lot. Um, dang. I, I don't know. I don't know what I... I just wasn't expecting to like it as much, but maybe it's just because I'm playing a lot of the Pokemon trading card game on the Game Boy Color <laughs> right now that I'm like, yeah, give me a deck building, like, full-on story. No, but I just truly do enjoy it. These have been added to strength when you have less than half your health, one strength when you play a move card. Yeah, it's just, it's just very fun. New character unlocked, House of the Sapphire. Looks like potentially a more defensive focused character. Uh, very cool. New zone that has a lot going on there. However, on top of the fact that, did we? Oh no, we we did all of the missions. We we wrecked it. We we hundred percent it. Speed ran. Additional common card slot in the marketplace. First upgrade in the dojo is free. Is a really cool thing to eventually get. I guess I can get it now. You pick a common card when you start your mission. I really like that from like a for like a playability replayability kind of standpoint. You can review the story behind every Maho Kenshi of unlocks so far as well as the cards and level up rewards. Equipment collection? What? Equipment? There's equipment that I don't even have. No idea what that's about. Don't know what equipment is. Uh, but very cool. Yeah, now, alas, alas, that is that, and that's going to do it here for today for Maho Kenshi. I, I really enjoyed it. I... I'm impressed by it. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I I was kind of... I was not... I didn't look at it and be like, eh, I don't think it's going to be good, but I was more like, we'll see. It's kind of like a deck builder. I'm sort of like, we'll see. Because it's so easy for them to be okay. Uh, and I think that this is doing some fun stuff with the cards. Like, I think the actual card design itself is pretty darn fun. I think the, the exciting thing about it really is just that it's just a nice meaty deck builder and I like the format of it being a, a and like an actual RPG, like a full-on kind of more campaign-focused thing. Yet, you do get to create a fresh deck every new zone. So, you get that experience of like a roguelike run. That fun feeling of finding the synergy, creating the synergy, creating the combo from something. Uh, 
but honestly, you actually end up doing it much more often. You, it's a, a condensed condensed form of it. So it's it's sort of like playing a bunch of really tiny roguelike runs. But I imagine they're going to get tougher and longer as time goes on, I'm sure. But like it's like playing a bunch of tiny roguelike runs. So you get to experience a lot of different things while it's all part of one much bigger, grander roguelike run. Like in a campaign style format. Um, and I, I'll just say, yeah, I, I really like it. If you guys like this a lot, I'd be very down to play more. Uh, I think it's very good. I enjoyed it. Link in the top description if you want to pick it up for yourself. I will say the price is, you know, a, a little bit steeper. I, I paid with my own money for this game here. It is normally uh, $24.99. It is 10% off right now. And if you are interested in getting it, I would probably recommend picking it up at that price. Who knows the next time it'll go on sale. Otherwise, wish, wish list and see what's up. Because uh, it's not cheap, but it also is going for a different thing. I feel like, for whatever reason, um, scripted, like scripted, intentional story, story or um, campaign-based games uh, tend to attract a higher price. And I think that you know, I yeah, mileage may vary on whether or not that price is worth it for you. I think it seems fair. I think it seems fine to me. Uh, but yeah, check it out with the link in the top of the description. Thank you, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.